So then, we are back with more understandings from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original documents, the transcriptions and translations from the time of the Hebrews in the desert, and then also later during the time of the prophets. Then you find these translations very interesting these days because we are at the end and then understanding from the viewpoint of the Messiah what he was then explaining shows us we are during the time of the rebuilding and the politics of our country won't make any help regarding then the world system the system is already set for the time of the end that's what Daniel then the prophet always maintained during his time of duty in King's palace as you can understand Daniel was used as then a balance point to where then the situation of the government of the time the most important government in the world of his time was then taking place and he himself reminding the king of heaven's authority and guideship and leadership that's why you find these days a very interesting point where then the uh, layers of understanding from each of the prophets relates with then heaven's perspective plus then Gentile ruling. That's why these days we find then prophet Daniel in the 12th chapter is stating at the end knowledge would increase. People would go to and fro. What he was saying very precisely was because of the amount of knowledge acquired they would not know what to do with it that's why people are going to and fro to and fro in a word translated means confusion people going to and fro and knowledge would increase it meant a confusion during the time however we understand Daniel the prophet, he was then outside of the city. He was outside of the plan of the Messiah during the time that the prophecies were then spoken, plus the city given by Moshe when he received from the holy mountain, up there when he was before the presence of Yahweh. What does it say to us? He was speaking then a secular government. He was being guided by Yahweh himself because his spirit, his influence upon his life was very strong. He had many dreams. Contrary to what many people they understand when they read, he did not have visions. He only had dreams because he was outside of the holy understanding from the time of Moses. That's the distinction from dream and vision. Only those that are in the holy camps, they receive visions, direct link from heaven. Otherwise, must be a dream. That's why you find then the king of Babylon had a dream. Had to be interpreted. You find Pharaoh during the time of Joseph, he had dream. In dreams. And then Joseph, he was there and he interpreted them. Daniel was then also involved with having many dreams. But then in the dream itself, the angel revealed. It was not a vision. It was a dream. So when you then read Daniel the prophet, he was a statesperson. He was in charge of many people under him. Because diviners, astrologers, whatsoever had to do with religion... Daniel was the first because he was representing heaven always indicating heaven's opinion when the rulership then takes place by pagans or then Gentile ruling that's why then we have these Daniel in a word explaining the relationship with the heaven and then the rulership of Gentiles as we can understand, then came Daniel, then the Middle Persian, Cyrus, came and he maintained Daniel in charge. Because the heaven was in charge. 
Isn't that interesting? You don't hear any more information regarding the Chaldeans and the astrologers and, and those demoniacs. You only hear of Daniel giving directives of the Most High. So then, what do we gather then from these days regarding the last days? Politics are not important. Because there is an already path set by this time. The Creator has revealed precisely what to do. So then the politics are mere details. Details of a future plan. An existing president already has a plan for the future. Because we have reached the time where then you have to make a shift from the portion of Daniel in the 12th chapter before then the striking of the rock at the base of the statue then gives you the understanding of each of those kingdoms over the centuries then destroyed man the close of the age this is what it meant the simple closing of the age when he returns but then Daniel, he does not spend a whole lot of deal translating the prophecies previously. We understand he had a copy of Yermiahu, Megillah, or then the writings of Yermiahu, because as he was then studying the 70 years, and the word states very clearly, he had a copy of Yermiahu in his hands. However, he did not have the copy of the other prophets. Because the nation was taken captive and then there was destruction everywhere. And the indication is because he shifts from to and fro, speaking of then secular governments. Then he makes a shift to the very end when the Messiah returns. He doesn't explain, either he expound the importance of the gap of peace yet it must be experienced because Yerushiahu then spoke of and he did not have the record during the time he had only Yermiahu in his hand because he was then obviously born during the time of Yermiahu's being the prophet giving directives to the nation and we understand absolutely with no doubt that China is the leading force of the end of this age. There is absolutely no doubt about it because it's the most powerful economy in the planet. And the whole understanding of the end, when you begin to understand Revelation, gives you the plain information regarding this country. So why do the nations then are fighting with each other and then trying to have a leadership over the other where then the whole world should be focusing on what China is going to do? So each nation then going to and fro, precisely what Daniel said, and knowledge will increase, people are going to and fro. But then, when the end comes, then Yerushiahu's prophecy of the 61st chapter, as you can understand very plainly, speaks of then the rebuilding of the city and the cities. He was speaking in the spirit. Because Yerushiahu is mostly spiritual understandings. There are areas of a secular portion of the government, but those are very minimum comparing with the heavens understanding so then you have a layer of understanding from Daniel mostly secularly because he was a statesperson working for the pagan king then you have Yerushiahu the prophet of Israel then you have to understand the timing and then the layerings they were speaking of then the word becomes a whole lot more interesting in studying 
So as we understand from the time of those great kingdoms of the uh, past, many of the prophecies were then directed as those kingdoms then they became prominent. And since we are living during the time of the base of this chat to iron and clay, some nations would be strong, some nations would be weak, but then secularly speaking, we are not speaking of a heaven's viewpoint, only the secular viewpoint. The only reference the uh, Daniel the prophet gives regarding then the secular step by step then kingdoms and nations that would come after each other you understand secularly there are only few instances where you find heaven then introducing heaven's understanding and then secular understanding so then you have a specific prophet teaching you rulership of Gentiles then you have the prophet also, Yerushiah, is speaking to you regarding then heaven. How heaven relates with the end and how Gentiles then relates with the end. Though Daniel, he did mention regarding the rock coming from heaven meant Yahweh Yeshua. But Yahweh would come through him. Then as a rock would strike the entire kingdoms of this earth. And then the earth would be destroyed and then rebuild. As per the prophecies. But then when you begin your quest of having more information of this country of the end. You can't deny that China is the leading force. So why then going to and fro if you have the answer? And since the information came out regarding then the time of the rebuilding spoken of by Yerushiahu, there is no reason of going to and fro and then starting wars and rumors of wars. Those areas were already completed. Because the present moment the euro in Europe is going to break it's going to be dismantled because nations could not hold strongly to their part of the deal so in order for then the countries that were always working always strong in order for them to survive they have to detach themselves from the others but they're going to be provided with then this country of the end providing market an expensive market so they can rebuild themselves and our part then is not introducing more policies around the world is retrieving policies from the world so we are doing the contrary we are trying to re-establish policies that never worked while our nation is broken we don't have enough manufacturing we don't have the backup of the manufacturing to do the politics anymore and we have this only four years to get the economy saved so then our monetary system can be saved by then making cuts from our expenses by regathering our military from the world and then saving our money. Being responsible. So then this new partner in the world then can do their work. It's set by heaven. So then when you begin to read the 8th chapter of Revelation, you find then and many nations would do trade. As you understand, China is the motherland. 
and the nations would come to her to do trade. What does it say if you then retract a bit and you begin to read prior and then you understand Daniel, Gershiahu, Yermiahu, and Ezekiel, then you find those layers related with it. So rather than having a person launching a new plan of enforcing our policies that never worked before, we have only short four years to get our economy saved, and there is a partner with a great military that can take responsibilities. Because as we understand, China is not going to do what they want. They are not going to steal from nations. They are going to do trade. Healthy trade. But we, we ourselves, we don't have anything to trade with anymore in comparison with. So then we must gather our military from the world and then we should rebuild. While then having the Chinese to take on sections of the world and do patrols and so on and so forth. So then we can rebuild. And then United Nations obviously would be more proactive and have sections of the world and delineated. But since each country they have their sovereignty, they don't have to have us around anymore. They have their own abilities. It's a time for us to retreat and then reorganize our country. That's why the military of China is growing so much because they are providing then the materials required for the rebuilding. Because we are in this gap of time spoken of by Yershiahu. And then the euro, as we understand, is going to break. So then, the countries that are in trouble, they can make a deal with China. This was the aim of the entire growth of this country. And why do you think they have their military never involved in invasion before? It's to escort the cargo. Put your hands to work. So many nations are in trouble and then in wars and then... When those leaders, they come to their senses, they are going to start ordering parts and ordering materials. What do you think China is going to do? In order to stabilize respect amongst the nation, they are going to be escorted. Dozens of ships coming out of China and they are going to be escorted with the warships. So then the nations, they can respect those leaders trying to rebuild themselves. So then the others trying to do harm, they get some shame on the face, and they do the same. But then we ourselves, we have a short time of four years to try to save our monetary system, and then we are going to launch another plan? Is that going to work? Where then Yahweh has provided China take on this extreme expensive enterprise of the world's patrols. Because the focus is what then China is going to do because the Creator has given them the forward motion. And the rest of us should rebuild. Can't you begin to link up then what the word is explaining? 
you know, and the nations of the world would do trade with her. China is considered a mother land. So why then are we spending our time trying to implement another type of a policy and it won't work? So the existing president is doing a great job so far. He's already started removing our military from the Middle East. Because then the motion of the understanding is those countries over there, they're going to start ordering products and materials to rebuild their countries. And where do you think they're going to get the enforcement to get the cargo delivered? Then cargo planes with uh, cargo also escorted by fighter jets and so on and so forth, only because the country is then rebuilding. What a great, nice and perfect plan! So then the country that used to be stronger in Europe, they can return to their system of old and then they can move on with their development. And then the other countries, they make a deal with China. It's the only answer. And they get their products delivered on time and then escorted. So then understanding from the viewpoint of the prophets of old, we find in Yeshiago speaking of the great time of the end, where then the cities, speaking of heaven's city as representatives, the Messiah came and he brought the first anointing for the services of the second, services of the Holy Tabernacles. So then we find the seat that was started in 1009, churches, ended in 2009. For the regular calendar, but the Creator's calendar would be 6009. And it was the time of the end of the deceit. So Gentiles, they can't use anymore their views of heaven. The story all have to behave to go to heaven. That's junk. That's a lie. That's deceit. You understand then what is returning are the holy cities. That's why you find in Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Philadelphia and the others. Those were cities. And right to the holy city in the city of Ephesus right to the holy city in the city of Smyrna and right to the city in the city of Philadelphia there is no church church was invented church from the time of the deceit where you could believe there is a Messiah outside of the holy tabernacles doesn't exist So then we are transitioning ourselves at the moment from coming out of the deceit in terms of belief in heaven and then we have the last secular government of the age. Then the nations must line up with it. Per the prophecy's understanding, we have then the Messiah was born in 3999. And it was found because then the great star was recorded in astronomical records of the time. Plus, do you find then the eclipses, lunar eclipses? And the computer was able to make the calculation. 
$39.99. First day of the Feast of the Tabernacles. And he then tabernacled with us. So, during the year of 3999, and the first day of the Feast of the Tabernacles, he was born. Then you count around 30 plus years old. He spent a couple days with the Samaritans. He was indicating they would have 2,000 years of rulership. Secular rulership. Try to understand, because Samaria is a secular country. So then the secular time is also ending. So then when you read in Revelation, the first thousand years, his people then would be in charge, and they think it was the church. The church didn't exist. He was speaking of the Holy Tabernacles. And these thousand years is already gone. A long time ago. It was from the time that he was born, then he ascended, then from a, this time until 1009, when the tomb in Israel was then, Jerusalem was destroyed by the Muslims. That's the time then when Satan, the destroyer, the facet of the destroyer then was put in prison. So when you read the layer in Revelation is speaking of, oh, then the angel would come from heaven and bind Satan. That's gone a long time ago. But in the near future, he's going to be released. But then first, in order for him to be released, the deceit then was over in 09. The time of Satan's rule in the earth was from 1009 until 2009. That was his thousand years of deceit. But then there is a transitional time going on. We are transitioning back to the truth. That's why the rebuilding is spoken of by Yerushiahu. Then you have the 2,000 years on top of the first thousand. His people would be then given directives from the holy cities. Then the holy cities were destroyed. Then Satan became in charge of the deceit. That's the other thousand. So when you read Revelation, you know where the first thousand was and then the second thousand. And then the 2,000 on top of it indicating the rulership of the Gentiles. It was given to the Chinese as the end rulership of the Gentiles in this age. And the other nations, they lined up themselves to do trade with her. That's why you read these in Revelation. But then you have to understand layers. Layers, layers, layers. You have to understand the layering system of Revelation, and then the layering system in Yerushiahu, the layering system in Yermiah, the layering system in Daniel, and then the layering system in Ezekiel. But in distinct times, you make those references precisely on time. So why is so a big deal of politics if the politics are already set in place? We only have to maintain our expenses to make sure our monetary system doesn't break. So then we can do trade with a new partner. Set by heaven for the end of time. To the time of peace, there is a gap of time where we rebuild. So then during this time of reduction, you find the discipline upon his people, the elect. You find them clustering as during the time of Shaul when he was then delegating responsibilities. That's where you find his people being disciplined. And while they are disciplined, there is then the rebuilding. But not only those cities of the Hebrews, with the entire world. 
the world then would be in a rebuilding time. Quite honestly, the first time I began to read the understanding of Yerushiah, well, I thought well, that has to do with obviously the cities. But then, has to have a reference from the previous covenant and revelation in harmony with each other, based upon the Gentile rule during the time that these cities are being rebuilt. Has to be a period of peace. Because Yahweh has mentioned, then the heathen, the Gentiles, would observe his mighty hand. Then begin to read the Gospel, the Metichiach, the 24th chapter, and then the words of the Mishia, they were very compounded. A person wrote in haste. While the Mishia, when he was doing the actual teaching, he was giving a space of time. He was explaining those layers very precisely. But then you find the gap of peace, the gap of time in Yerushiah when you read the 61st chapter. You find there the gap of peace during the time of the rebuilding. So the whole world scenario is resolved before the starting. So then the people can observe as precisely as Yerushiah said, then the heathen. The Gentiles would observe the mighty hand of the Creator during the time His people then are disciplined and returning to the holy services. Because there is a second anointing coming for them. But then Shimon said they had to be disciplined because they were not doing their work. So we have then the rulership of the earth, of the end. We already have the understanding from heaven, where we stand, what type, what period of time. We have an idea when the true starting of the end would be, when these 2,000 years end of the secular rulership, 6031, 2031 then completes the 2,000 from the time the Messiah spent with the Samaritans. Without reducing the time. So then we have the reducing of time and we don't know for how long this reducing is going to be or how many years. For sure we know then that 2009 was the end of the deceit when Satan was ruling with the falsified idea of heaven. Then you have the rulership of the Gentiles on top of it while holding the whole understanding in place. Then since in 6031 would be the very maximum without a reduction, then what are going to be then the vengeance or the judgment? 490 days. The completion of the spring feast was 490, is only half of it. What do you think then the other half would be? 490 days, so then another year and a half. Roughly a year and a half after 6031 or 2031. Then is the end, the end of the age. There are no other numbers that can be included. Whatsoever big numbers you read in Revelation, it is in relation with the prophets of old. Any number you can understand from the time of Daniel has to be during the time of the vengeance. You can count then in terms of sevens, you can count in seasons, you can count in feasts, any way you want. But from the time of Daniel and the prophets, you have to put the line and it ends precisely during the time of the vengeance. Because any prophecy related with a time in that day or in that moment or when the time comes, 
It's from the time the person is speaking related with the prophecy and then the time on it. It has to land during the time of the vengeance. So don't be concerned with those big numbers in Revelation. Those are mostly done. The most important is understanding from the time the Messiah then was born and his ascension, the time is start counting. There's truly not much time left. The economic situation in Europe is an uproar. Middle East is in trouble, wars. And those are being halted. And then China is bursting with a great economy. What do you think? Because the world is going to be rebuilt. In a sense of understanding of the time of rebuilding. The rebuilding of the cities. Because Yahweh has a plan. He wants to show the world what it's like when His kingdom then is established in the earth. Without interfering with their own politics. This is what's coming in the next years. So then yet we have a choice. We can try to implement our junky policies and then destroy our economy. Or we can be in line and then start rebuilding ourselves. Reducing our military might from the world because we are broken. And then do the work. Do the rebuilding as any other nation. So the time of the end in terms of the trade's partner is already set. The countries must line themselves up with China's policy. Whatsoever they are. And that's the only hope for those countries in Europe. They are breaking. And then the Middle East. And precisely this plan is taking place because we find already the future on the page of Revelation already given us the outcome of it and they would be prosperous. So whatsoever plan from any nation is against this plan, then it's not going to work. Whatsoever their schemes are is going to work against them. Including us. If we try to put out a policy over the plan of the Creator, we are going to get the end of the shaft. In other words, we are going to experience the end of destruction of it. Please stay tuned, much more coming up, because later we can understand more how we should then relate with each other during this time of the end. And what then Shilimon in Proverbs has taught us. And how to maintain order and understanding during politics. This is what Proverbs are. Speaks of how to behave in politics. Mostly. <laughs>